Okay, what I have here is a little Faraday box. It's got double layers of heavy aluminum foil all around it. It's sitting on this plastic container. It's being fed with one line out of the generator again, just like in the last videos. If you look inside, you can see that the SFM is running quite nicely. And let me go up here and, and show you the back of it. Be sure you you know there's nothing going on. And this plastic container is, is empty. So what I'll do with this is I'll take and pause it. And then I'll take and come back and disassemble it for you. To show you how it's setting inside. Okay, so here I've taken it off of the little plastic container. You can actually see it's still operating in there. And I'll go ahead and open up the box. And you can see it inside. Working quite nicely, really. And what I'll do is disconnect the feed wire to it. And then carefully pull it out of here for you. I don't want to wreck the placement on my magnets because then I'd have to readjust them again and that's getting to be quite a pain. But Okay, here we go. There's the little guy right there. That's what we had in the box. You take a look in here and see there's nothing else in there. So we'll temporarily set it aside, and we'll go ahead and hook the coil back up to the generator, push this back a ways, and readjust the frequency because when it's in the box, it does slightly change the tuning. So anyway, that's the unit running in a Faraday cage. I know there'd be someone that would say, well, ground the Faraday cage, and someone else that says, well, you know, leave it floating. Someone will say that RF can still get in my hokey little cage, and actually, that's not true. Uh, I have it, haven't got any cracks or crevices that would allow anything less than about a couple hundred megahertz to get in there. Also, I thought I'd show this. This is a Booten RF probe, and there's the Booten up there, and we'll zoom in on it. First, I want to lay it next to next to the unit, and then we can zoom in. So we have 155. 150, call it 155 millivolts of RF down here when it's laying right close to that guy. Let's go ahead and move him over here a minute. And we'll go ahead and take another look. And now we have about 8 millivolts. So I hope that answers some of the questions about me having my lab in a high RF area and this is all coming from something else. Okay, thanks for watching.